In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, we heard from the Gospel according to St. Luke, a very known story, one that we, we pray in the Egbeya, in the midnight hour, about Christ going to the house of Simeon the Pharisee, and in the meeting of the woman who in the, was known to be a sinner. And a couple of points I'd like to share with you. The first thing we, we see here in the Gospel is two very opposite personalities, two very, two very opposite circumstances in front of Christ. We see here Simon the Pharisee, and we see here the sinner woman. And in both cases, God did not refuse either one of them. Remember, you have, we, we have to recall that Christ was invited to Simon the Pharisee's house. Christ did not refuse this invitation. And Christ did not refuse the woman to approach him. And this shows us one thing. God is fair and God is all loving. It's an important point to understand that God is fair and that God is all loving. He has no partiality. He doesn't have a distinction or favoritism to one group of type of people. He doesn't necessarily will say, I, I, I like the, the Pharisees, I like the priests more, let me hang out with them. And he doesn't at the same time ignore the priests, he doesn't, and, and he doesn't ignore the people. He never ignored the tax collectors, he never ignored the sinners, he never ignored the sick. Christ made himself open to everyone. He had no distinction. So, since Christ is all loving and all fair, then the relationship that happens is going to be dependent on the people. And this is important for us. Why? Because very easy for us to want to blame God and very easy for us to want to say God has his own shortcomings. And this is not true. God has no shortcomings. God has no partiality. God is not, doesn't join a certain clique. God is for everyone. So then maybe in the relationship with God depends on the individual person. So what do we see in the difference between the Pharisee and between the sinner woman? The first thing that we see in the Pharisee versus the sinner woman is that his focus was on everybody else but himself. Why? Because he said it. When he saw the woman coming to him, what did he do? He judged that woman. And not only did he judge that woman, he judged Christ. He said, if this man, if he were a prophet and knew what kind of woman this was, he would not allow her to touch him. So, when this, this attitude is about looking at everybody else, not looking towards myself, versus the, the, the woman, when she went to Christ, she didn't care what the people were going to say of her. She didn't care what she probably even thought of herself. She only cared for one thing, God's mercy. God's mercy. Her focus was Christ. So the lesson in this point is that where is my focus? When I come to church, where is my focus? Am I focusing on Christ like the woman did? And His tender mercies and His love? Or do I focus on everything else? Do I focus and look around the church and say, Oh, this person is here. You know what they just did? I saw them outside the church. Or I met them at the mall and they were doing this and they were not fasting, and you know, do we become judgmental? Do we change our focus from focusing on ourselves to focusing on others? 
or even when I come to church, maybe I'm focusing about my own problems and like, God, you know, what am I going to do when I leave the church? How am I going to handle this problem? And You know, the focus is anything but Christ. And yet here, the lesson for us is to be Christ-centered focused. And this is going to be a very important point because I will talk about another point about forgiveness. So number one, we need to be like the woman and have the attitude to focus on Christ. Number two point, I not need to be self-centered. I need to not be self-centered. Unfortunately, what happened here, the Pharisee had pride. He had pride. Yet, he was too self-centered. Too self-centered. Even to the point, the self-centeredness led him with a wrong belief. It even led him, unfortunately and sadly, to judge God. And, 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 and this is true even among God. Sometimes we become so self-centered with ourselves. We become so self and, and, and there are different aspects of our life that could be that make us come self-centered. I could be self-centered in you know the fact of what I achieve and my position. So when things go around me, I judge. And when things go against me, I judge. I can become so self-centered in, in my tribulations and hardships. Maybe things around my life are, 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 that are outside of my hand are going difficult. And I judge. And I judge God. Maybe I become self-centered in what I don't have. And I need to have it. And I, at all costs. And I can judge, and I can judge God in this. The woman here, very opposite. She was not self-centered. Because if you think about what she had to go through. Keep in mind, Simon, Simon, Simeon the Pharisee said to himself, if this woman were, if Christ knew that this woman was a sinner, so in other words, she had a reputation. So we have to assume this, she had a reputation. And she also allowed herself to walk in someone's house. You know, I could imagine, imagine, imagine you're having a gathering at your house and suddenly some uninvited guest just walked up to your house. You can expect there's going to be a reaction. She was an uninvited guest. But she did not focus on this point. And matter of fact, her own life, her own way of life, in itself could be a stumbling block. You know what? She was a sinner. She was a sinner. And probably, you know, sometimes we as sinners have a hard time coming to church because maybe I feel so bad for what I did in my life. And the sin itself becomes the centered point rather than Christ-centered. Even my own sins, if I center my life around focusing, feeling guilty for what I did, it may become a stumbling block for me to come to Christ. She didn't do that. All she wanted to do was to come at Christ's feet and asking for forgiveness. With, that, with tears, not with her even words, with her tears, to come for asking for forgiveness. Which leads to point number three. The relationship, and I heard this in the sermon, and I want to share with you, the relationship between forgiveness and love. Forgiveness and love. I want to mention in the sermon, as it was heard, as mentioned in the gospel, those who are forgiven much will love much. And those who are forgiven little, will love little. And a Buddha mentioned, imagine someone out of an act of love, felt so intense love. What's the, imagine someone does something for you with an immense amount of love. 
you know, we almost feel we just want to do anything for that person that loved us. We want to feel we do anything for someone that loves us dearly. But if you don't feel that love, maybe I'll be a little bit cold towards that person. I might be a little bit cold towards that person. And it's the same thing with our relationship with God. If we don't feel God's love, I may not be close to Him. I may not be close to God. But when I feel God's love, and how am I going to feel God's love? And the Buddha mentioned is through forgiveness. As even the Lord told Simon the Pharisee, two people had debts. One owed 50 dinar and the other 500. And when he forgave, he freely forgave them both. Which will love them more? He said, I suppose the one who he forgave more. So then the question, Abuna, are you telling me I should go outside and do a lot of sin? So I can feel that God's going to forgive a lot of things? No. It's more again, it's the, it relates to the first couple of points. It's about the attitude and the perception. Sin is sin. But if I don't feel my sin, and I don't come to confession, if I don't come to repentance and confess, then I'm not going to receive forgiveness for the sin. And if I don't have the forgiveness of the sin, the absolution for the sin, I'm not going to feel love. Do you want to feel more love? Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for repentance. Change my heart. It's not quantitative. It's qualitative. It's not about the amount of sins I come to confess. It's about the quality of my sin. Maybe there's this one sin in my life that I'm just hanging on to. I cannot let go. Or maybe there's this one sin I don't know how to come. And, and, and I wonder, I'm ashamed of it. And I hide from it. But if this sin is not forgiven, you won't feel that love. Do you want to experience love? And this is what the message of the Gospel today. Come, repent. Ask for forgiveness. Come as the lady, the woman came to the feet of Christ with her tears. She didn't say a lot of words. And yet look what happened at the end. She was forgiven. And she, because she felt this great love. She felt this great love by God. Because she felt this great repentance. If we come with a repentant heart and, and come to confession and confess our sins. And then we hear the words when, when, when the priest puts his cross on your head and he says, absolve us. What an immense feeling that God has forgiven me my sins. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And, when I, and, and, and by this, I will love God more. You want to love God more? Ask for forgiveness. Come to repentance. And look what happened in the story today. And maybe we, we might be here and I might say, Abuna, that's great. But God will accept me. Look what God did today. God accepted the sinner woman. And God was even willing to accept the Pharisee. But the Pharisee held back. That's why the Lord told him, you know, I came to your house, you offer no water for my feet. But this woman has not ceased to wipe my feet with her tears. My head you did not anoint. But this woman has not ceased to anoint me with fragrant oil. You know what? Because she felt it. She felt the repentance in her heart. She felt sorry and she came to Christ for forgiveness and absolution. And because of this amount, intent, and this is the thing, when you come to experience this, it will be a deep feeling in your heart. It will be a deep feeling in your heart. A lot of times, we always come and say, I don't feel God. I don't feel that experience with God. Because we're holding back from our sins. We hold back from our way of life. We cannot come to repentance. We cannot come to want to offer ourselves and say, God, here I am. And offer my sin, put my sins before Him. So, if, if you don't, you will not feel the forgiveness. And if you don't feel the forgiveness, you will not feel love. 
And when you don't feel love, you will not love God in return. That's the equation. You want to, and this will only happen if we have the attitude to be christ -like. And I say this because even in our sins, if we focus on our sins too much, we cannot focus on Christ. Let us focus on Christ. Come to Him. Come to Him as you are. Let Him change you. Let Him tell you the words, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. By this, you will love God with, because you will feel the immense love. You will feel the immense love by God will be forgiven you through your sins. This is why Christ came. This is why He took flesh. He didn't come on earth to make our earthly life easy. He came ultimately for the, for the remission of our sins. His blood forgave this debt. Remember, even the Lord mentioned to Simon the Pharisee in the parable. And when the two, the one that had 50 denarii and the 500 denarii, when he freely forgave them both because they could not pay back. This is a representation of Christ coming to earth to forgive us on the cross, that cross. And I hope we take attention to pay attention to the cross in our life, the cross of God forgiving us with his blood. He forgave us freely. Do you want to feel that love? Come to him. Open your heart to Him. Let Him and come in repentance. And you will see that forgiveness will clear you away and you will hear the same words He told the woman. Go in peace. And you will feel how much God really loves us. May the Lord, who has, who has been there for every one of us, young, old, servant, non-servant, sinner, tax collector, priest, every one of us, God has been made to love us freely, all, without partiality. May who has forgiven us and gave his blood and shed his blood on the cross for us to forgive us for our sins, may he bring us so we may hear in, in, in our repentant heart with tears that we hear the words, your sins are forgiven, go in peace, and glory be to God forever. Hallelujah.